right, ladies and gentlemen. So as we look at this practice quiz, um, this reaction, uh, this reaction is the reaction that relates to questions one through five. First of all, what you should know is that in any reaction, you start with reactants and you end with products. All right, so the reactants in this equation are merely just these items, this CH4, and the CH4 is methane. And then the O2, the oxygen. Okay, so that's the reactants. Make sure that you're writing down uh, and fixing any of your errors. Writing down as I write down and fix any of the errors that you've made. Now, another critical skill for what's going to be going forward in our balancing reactions, you have to be able to count the number of atoms in all the formulas here. Now, this question asks how many hydrogen atoms are there. So, of course, you're counting this over here, not this over here, because I'm asking about the product side, the product side. So the answer for that is two. Okay. The reaction is not balanced, and the reason it's not balanced is because there are not the same number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. So what you need to do to balance equations is make it so that all the atoms, they're the same number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. Okay? So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to rewrite this reaction over here, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a list of all the elements that are involved, and I generally make the list under the arrow. So we have carbon involved. There's carbon. This next element is hydrogen. That's hydrogen, and then of course we have oxygen. So what I'm going to do is make that list under the arrow, and then over here, I'm going to do an inventory. An inventory is just when you're counting. I'm going to do an inventory for the reactant side, and I'm going to do an inventory for the product side. So how many carbons do you see over here on the reactant side? It's just one. How many over here on the product side? It's also one. Okay. How many hydrogens are over here on the reactant side? Four. And how many are over here on the product side? And right there, when you have an inequality, as soon as you have an inequality, that means you don't have an equation. This is not balanced. All right, let's do a count for our oxygens. How many oxygens are there? Two on the reactant side. How many on the product side? There are three. All right, so the first fix, what I'm going to do is correct my number of hydrogens here. And I can do that by putting a two there. And that, of course, changes this two to a four. And that helps us. And it also does something to our oxygens. I've got these two oxygens here, but now that I have a two, this distributes all the way over to that oxygen as well. So that changes my three oxygens on the product side to four. All right? This four comes from these two oxygens plus this two distributing over that oxygen. So there's two oxygens here for these two water molecules, and there's two oxygens over here in this molecule. So the total is four. Well, it does. So we're still not perfect. So that, but that's easily accomplished. Whenever you have a singer, single element by itself, that's a pretty easy fix. So I'm going to double that up now to four. And now all my numbers are consistent. Now we have a balanced reaction. <laughs> now, what kind of reaction do we have here? Combustion. This is a combustion reaction. This is because O2 is one of the reactants. And CO2 and water are the products. 
these, this, this idea, you look for oxygen as one of the reactants, and CO2 and water are the products in a combustion reaction. Those are the hallmarks of a combustion reaction. So number six says, identify which reaction below follows the general pattern above. Oh. All right? So this, of course, is the general pattern I'm talking about. Now, do you all recognize which general pattern this is? Yep, this is a double replacement pattern. The one that fits is this. Okay, now, if I, if I may, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is very quickly diagram this reaction so you see what's happening. I'm going to put a vertical line right there, a vertical line right there, a vertical line right there, and a vertical line right there. This is silver with a nitrate. This is potassium with a chloride. Now I have silver with the chloride and then potassium with the nitrate. That's a double switch. If I label the silver as A and the nitrate as B, if I label the potassium as C and the chloride as D, now I have A with D and then C with B. You just have to be able to figure out the parts of the formulas and see the double switch. Okay? All right. So this is double replacement, which is that means the answer to question number seven is also A. Let's just go through this really quickly. What kind of reaction is this? Two simpler things going together to make a more complex thing. What kind of reaction is that? I heard somebody say it. That's combination, otherwise known as synthesis. Okay. You got to be careful. Combustion and combination are not the same. What's this one where we have a complex molecule being broken apart into simpler substances? I heard I heard it. Decomposition. Yes, Marcus. Yeah, the question was combination and synthesis are the same thing. So if you use either word on a test or a quiz, would either be acceptable? And the answer to that question is yes. All right, here I have Ki and then chlorine by itself. Now I have K with chlorine, potassium chloride, and then iodine by itself. What kind of reaction is that? Kayla had it. That's single replacement. So that means the answer to number eight is D. You want me to diagram that one? Okay, so let's diagram number eight. And I'll put the letters on the bottom. Let me, le let me label potassium as the A, the iodine as the B, and then the chlorine by itself as C. Okay, so A, B together, and then C by itself. Now what I have, I'll split that one in half. Now I have A with C, and then B by itself. You are right. So if A is our potassium, and B is the iodine, which are combined, they're chemically combined right now to start the reaction, and this is chlorine, it's two chlorine atoms, but it's just the element chlorine. So that's a chlorine molecule, all right? So the chlorine is the element chlorine we've represented as C here. Now in the finished part of this reaction, I have potassium with chlorine called potassium chloride. So A's with C chemically bonded, and then now iodine, which we label B by itself, is, is, is well, it's by itself to finish, okay? All right. Now this, this one's a little bit tricky, 
And what I'm going to do is actually write this out for you. Sodium metal, and this is, this is a common error. Sodium, people see sodium in nutritional labels and they think, oh, sodium is salt. Sodium is only part of salt. So the word sodium in chemistry class refers to just this element, Na. And sodium metal would be a solid. And if it's, yeah, sodium's on the left side of the periodic table, so it's a metal. Okay? Sodium, when it's combined with chlorine, is the stuff we call salt. That's the stuff you put on your french fries. Okay? Sodium by itself is not salt. By itself, it's, it's an element which is a metal. This is an S, which indicates solid. Now, chlorine, if you remember um, that famous band, Captain Brinkelhoff and the Genuine Diatomics, chlorine, and this is the tricky part, chlorine is a diatomic, so you have to list a subscript 2 there. When chlorine is by itself as an element, it always comes in the shape of two atoms bonded together. And then we should also list a G afterwards. That was indicated here by a gas. And I'm going to write an error, an error, an arrow. And then this would most likely be a solid sodium chloride. That's, that's salt. Now, if we do an element, we have our elements Na and we have our elements Cl. If we do a count here, I have one sodium, I have two chlorines on the reactant side, and I have one of each on the product side. So it's not balanced. To make it balanced, what we would need is a coefficient of two over here. That changes this to two, and it changes this to two. And then I would need a two here, which changes that to two. So. What isn't written here is a 1. We don't need it there, but it's implied that it would be there. Do you follow what I mean? Okay. Which is why this is the only answer that works for question 9.